beautiful cashmere. But what to make with it? I'm afraid to cut it. I have an idea. I'll show you what it is. Coming up. So I bought this navy beautiful cashmere probably 30 years ago. Oh my gosh, I bought it in 1994 because I went to North Carolina. I used to rep the Doncaster line and it was a beautiful women's wear line and they made, they had a factory in Rutherfordton, I have to say that real fast, Rutherfordton, North Carolina. And we consultants had a trip to North Carolina to see the factory and they sold some end pieces of fabric and this cashmere was one of them. And so that was 1994, 30 years ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I've had this and I would, sometimes I would lose it. I would like look for it and go, I'm gonna make a scarf out of it. And I look for it, I couldn't find it. And then I'd find it and I'd lose it and I'd find it and I'd lose it. A little, little weird. But there's about two yards here. And I remember it was pretty expensive. Um, it wasn't like a hundred a yard, it was probably like 50 a yard. But look, it's like soft and it's not, there's, I don't know, there's different kinds of cashmere. And it's navy, I love navy, oh my gosh. So I've had it and I didn't, I've never known what to do with it. Back in the 90s, we were, I wore a lot more jackets and I made more jackets, all that kind of stuff. But now I really don't wear jackets. Um, I'm kind of very relaxed uh, outfits. <laughs> knit stuff like this. So then I thought, a few years ago, I thought, I'm gonna make a poncho. I wanna make a blocked color poncho. And then I was thinking, I'd love to do yellow. And then last year, I, so that yellow was in my mind, I came across this on a fabric store called Gorgeous Fabrics. I think it was that, or it's Beautiful Textiles. There's one, I think it was Beautiful Textiles. It was online, and so they just sold small ends of things, or this was all that was left. This is a Michael Kors cashmere, I believe it was. Oh God, there's my yellow. <laughs> I can't believe it, there's my yellow. So now I have my color blocking ingredients. Um, it's still cold here, but soon it will be spring. And I thought, I better get on this. Otherwise, it's going to be a whole nother year before I do it. So I'm working on this. It's, it's happening. It's happening. And uh, okay, I'm going to tell you my idea. Let's see. <laughs> my idea is this right here. A poncho right here. And I did a muslin. I, this fabric I have is kind of, it's not real thin, so I got more of the weight. So I'm going to do like a little collar. It's a poncho, basically. Uh, yeah, it's just square across. And right here I have these, uh, I kind of just put some dash lines here. I'm gonna do a yellow block right here. There's gonna be a center seam. And then this is navy and the rest of that's navy. And then here, instead of doing blocks, I'm gonna do I think the wrap over side, this whole side yellow, the whole side yellow. And then this is the whole navy side. And then I put this on the muslin, I put the two colors here. So I have a navy side and the yellow side. And then I had it with here and I thought, what if I do a white collar? <laughs> I need some like white cashmere. And then white in here too. I'm hoping I don't see the seams. And I thought, well, I have some really beautiful white cottons, like some poplin satin pop. Uh, satin cottons and then I came in and there was this uh, I have this little tub of warm like a cozy fabric and I'm like I have like fur and this is this is like a just a double-sided fur and I have quite a bit of it and I thought what if I do like a little fur collar right here because you know we want to be cozy right here so I'm gonna do that isn't that great now the other thing I'm gonna do is I have like these little magnets right here. I'm gonna get it, um, they have some really cool uh, magnet snaps. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna have this just go magnet right over, boop, like that. And, and then I thought even making like a real pretty little flower or something kind of out of something. The two colors or I don't know. That'll just, it'll just evolve. And then I could just go like this, go like that and let it snap on. And then also, I have it covered, 
think. And I can also just wear it open like that. So it's still a poncho and it's open. So really, I'm afraid to cut this because, but the other thing is too, it's big chunks. So I'm not really cutting out pattern pieces. So um, I also have to remember there's a nap on it. So I guess it's not really gonna matter too much. Um, and it, in a poncho, it wouldn't matter anyway. I might even want to twist the colors around. I don't know. So I'm going to cut this out. I got my patterns all drafted. I'm going to go with that. I, I sat and thought about it for a while. Uh, yeah, so let's start cutting this out. So here is the pattern. And I think the hardest thing to do with this pattern is making sure I have it right side up. Also, I want to make sure the soft, furry part is going down. So I have this is the yellow, this is the my right side, and then I have that piece. I'm gonna do a yellow piece right here in the back, and then I've gotta figure out, uh, this is gonna get sewn here. So then this one, I need to cut right side up, right here. So I have a line here. What I'm going to do is just cut straight up here, and I'm going to add. I'm going to add like a one-inch seam allowance, I think. So and I, and I put like a. So it's not a big strip of yellow. I thought the wider the strip of yellow, kind of than the thicker everything would look. So or wider. How do you, you know, <laughs> so and I have a notch here, so I'm just going to add an inch to this, and then an inch to that. So this will be navy, and then when I'll, and I'll tape it back together, and that will be another navy, a whole piece. So this is the yellow. So this yellow will fit on the other side right there. And I make sure it's going to go like this, right sides down, and go that way. So that's the yellow. I'm gonna make sure that goes that way. Okay, so there's my yellows. And then I still have this piece left. I could do the collar in that if the yellow or if the white doesn't work out. All right, have this laid out, have my grain line here, and then my center back. I think I might, uh, I don't want to have it so pinned so close. I might do a one inch center back seam. I'm just gonna add three eighths here. That always makes it lay down really good. Do it. Add three eighths to the five eighths. And then I think on the sides right here, I was thinking about doing that also. Well, I have to do a seam allowance no matter what. So I just cut it up there, but I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a one inch seam allowance here. I'm going to put one inch right there because friction pens, you can just right on it and it will steam off, I hope. <laughs> and then my notches I'm going to have right here. I always put my pins in like this so I don't accidentally cut it. And then I usually see it and go, wait a second. I do that with my students. They're like, wait, they always accidentally cut it. And then um, I'm going to put some tape on this pattern so I can adjust the pattern right here. I think I might be able to get the pattern available for you. I can trace this all out on paper. It's not totally a professional pattern, but it's it's just a bunch of blocks. It's easy to follow. Okay, so one inch seam allowance, one inch seam allowance. But then the shoulder seams, I'm just going to keep five eighths because I want to top stitch that down. All right, now to cut this out. All right, here we go. Cutting the cashmere. I cut the yellow cashmere first because I haven't had it for 30 years. <laughs> okay, so far it's pretty easy. Okay, I can do this. All right, have this next piece figured out. And my cut here, this looks, this is the cross grain here, so I know it's straight. So I gotta make sure it's on my cutting board here straight. My length grains get these all straight. So what I'm gonna do is cut this one face down. This is where the neck is here. So that is the left side. 
And this one, that's the other part where the yellow's here. I gotta do that one face up. And I also put three notches here to show me where that back is going. And then I have, cause I have shoulder notches up here and they're double notches. I wouldn't know which way to go on that. So this one's gonna get cut here. It fits perfectly on the width of that. Cause this fabric is 60 inches wide. It's not around 60, it's actually 60. So that's good just fits. So now I got to get this all the green. I have the green line transferred. Then on this one, I will be taping this back together and then uh, cutting one because that'll be, I think that'll be flipped over. I have to double check that. <laughs> all right, now to cut the navy cashmere. Here we go. I've only cut a little tiny bit, so <laughs> yeah, I gotta graduate to this. I have this is the back. Okay, that's the side. I have a shoulder notches here. Very small. Okay, for that last piece, I'm gonna tape this back together here. pattern paper is great. It has all these graphs on it. You can really easily see what you're doing here as far as lining everything up. I'll just take that back together and then this goes face down and I cut one of these. Whew, I did it! I cut all those pieces out. <laughs> the cashmere, 30 year cashmere. I can't believe it's in such great shape. What did I do with it? <laughs> but I draped it on the dress form. This is how I kept it uh, thinking about, okay, right side, left side, that kind of thing. So this is like that. And then I have a white collar. It looks a little, um, is it uh, Harry Potter-ish? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but this is the, uh, the back right here. So I just do a chunk out of there. And then uh, like that. So I just pinned it. Now I just gotta sew it. And then the side will be navy in that one. Is this a Harry Potter or is that purple? Oh no, I don't want to look at Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, I guess, but uh, they'll be like, do you love Harry Potter? I'll be like, eh, I saw a few of the movies, but. <laughs> All right, so this might look a little collegiate. I might need to do the navy. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know. Not that collegiate's bad, but. <laughs> but been out of school for a while. All right, so this is uh, what I'm gonna do tomorrow because that was stressful. <laughs> so, all right, came in today to start sewing the poncho. Got my pieces on, just have to figure out where to sew these. I think I'll start with the back, sew these two together right here. And then I'll sew on the shoulder seams right here, right there, and then try it on. That's pretty simple. Have the base of it sewn. This is how it looks. Ta it's color blocked poncho. I love it. So simple. Why haven't I made this a long time ago? <laughs> this looks fun. Now I think I'm gonna cut the collar in the navy. One thing, it's really soft right here. It's softer than this. This one, the yellow has some other wool in it. It's not 100% cashmere, but this one is, this feels like a blanket. It's like, feels almost like fleece, but it's not. Oh. So now to finish the edges. I just was donated these <laughs> single fold bias tapes. They're from Kmart, 76 cents. I wonder how long go that was maybe the 80s <laughs> this has been around for a while so it's a single fold it actually matches really well because i was thinking i don't have any yellow i used to do a lot of mac and cheese cook-offs um, and use a lot of yellow stuff so i'm always out of it but i think this is going to work really well i'm just going to sew it right down the uh, edges here like so and then turn this in like that I think I'll just open this up, turn it in, and then stitch it. And that's going to cover that whole seam right there. I might also do it on the navy. That might be kind of fun. 
since I don't have navy. This this isn't fraying bad, but yeah, it will fray. So especially ponchos get put on and off, like sliding around. So be good to cover these up. But I think it'd be fun to cover that edge up in yellow also. So I'm just go around and sew all these raw edges. And I'm on the shoulders and the back. Um, and also where that inset was put. So yeah, so we've got a little bit of time here. <laughs> the center back seam right here, and then the other seam here. So that's a lot. And I have to do that before I hem everything and also before I get the collar in. So it's gonna be a while. My Hong Kong finish turning out so nice. It's fun to have the yellow binding on all the inner seams like this. It's, it's going to be fun to wear just because it's got some fun insides. <laughs> Get those all pressed. Like this. Now I'm ready to do the collar. collar. This is my collar. It's going to be cut on the fold and then it's just folded over. This is sewn along the neck edge. It's the center back. And then this is a little bit gathered here, and it's a real simple collar. I just have this little piece of cashmere left, and actually, it's good. I have one big square right here. Don't know what I could possibly make with it, but something maybe in the next 30 years. <laughs> here is my selvage. This also had a stamp on it, Americale Fabrics, the little goat. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Um, this looks like a cross grain here, so now I just got to make sure... I get this all on grain. All right, cut this out on the fold right here. And then I can put my collar on. It will look like a real poncho. And I got a little, this is the shoulder. This is the back. Do a little little nip there so I know where the center back is. It'll match up with the center back seam. The other shoulder. This goes like this. Right there. This gets folded in half right here. And this literally gets sewn on there, and then I'll be tucking this all the seam allowance into theirs. I'm just going to sew this. I'm actually going to make a little gather line right here to kind of crunch it up. So when I fold it like this, actually I'm going to, I'll do that when it's like that. So that'll look like that in the back and it won't be so high. Wow, these Hong Kong finished seams look so great. So much fun. You don't see any of them from the outside, but I know they're on in the inside. And also when you take this coat off, and then you flip it around, put it on, you'll see all those. It uh, looks a lot better than just raw seams, that's for sure. <laughs> so really fun. So now to do the collar. I've got some basting stitches in here too. So actually after I get it on, I'm just going to pull these just a little bit like that. And then it will get folded over so that the center back has just a little bit of a pucker there. And then I have to... Just sew this on, all right here. Now I got the center back mark here. Where's my center back? Right there. And I don't exactly know how I'm gonna tackle this collar, but <laughs> figure it out. I got my shoulder notch here, so it's on target. Right there. I'll be sewing in a little bit of a curve here. I also have to make sure, oh, I almost did that. I have to make sure this is the right side of the fabric. Ooh, right sides down, because then that's gonna go over and like that. Whew, I've done all that work for nothing. Okay, so center back, shoulder, and then this should fit right here. I had another, that's the center front notch. But this is gonna go Right, it's gonna pass this because this will go right. This should be like a circle right here at the five eighths mark, right there. Go five eighths over. So if I had this sewn about five eighths right here, this goes over here, and then it's gonna encapsulate 
that when it folds over and all this will get tucked in. I think that's the goal. I should try to do that because I don't think that's right at 5 8. So I'll just get a 5 8 in. This, on these measurement gauge, this right here is 5 8. So you just go with the here, you get your 5 8 inch dot right there. And then that dot, I believe, goes right to the end of this. Yes, it should be the way it fits, yeah. Fitting pretty good. Just sew that. There, this will come in here. And go around like that, and that will be the collar. I have it sewn on. This is gonna be really cute. I'll pull this gathering and then run a stitch through here. It's gonna look good. And then this is gonna be all hand stitch. So I'm gonna just do half, what, half an inch, five eighths, and then just hand stitch all of this to the collar. But I just realized that my pattern is a little off. I'm gonna have to adjust it. This is um, supposed to be hemmed already. So I have a little problem here. I gotta <laughs> actually hem this first. So I'm actually just gonna do a little mock-up right there. I want to get this collar finished. I think I'll just maybe five eighths on the front like that. So it'll go under about here. I'll go press this and do it the right way. But now this collar is a little long. I'm going to have to adjust it. Bummer. But, uh, but I mean, it fits all of this really good. I think I just made the pattern without adding that hem in unless this needs to go back a little bit, but it looks like I've got a lot of it here. I should try it. I think I'll try that first before I adjust the pattern and uh, see if this works that way. All right, got that undone, didn't trim a thing, and it looks like I just kind of stretched it because these fabrics will stretch. And I did stay stitch this lower part and it looks like it's going to fit if I just back it up a little bit. So good, I don't have to change my pattern out. It has a little bit, then it has also a little bit more curl in there, um, which makes it fit around the neck a little bit better. Yep. Don't do this. I'll have to take that all off, reset it. <laughs> but they, I kind of basted it anyway, so this was pretty easy. Actually, I sewed that twice, but. Um, let's take that off now it fits just fine in there and that's with the hem and then I'll I'll just pin that and then I'll come in there and hem that later all right that went together really well kind of clip the corners clip this so it rolls a little bit kind of just clip in the poncho the collar doesn't seem like it needs it. The neck edge is want it to roll. Then I have to pin all this down. I have to determine how much gather I want here. I can push a lot of the gather to the back part here and just do half inch tuck right here or it's about five eighths but it's a lot of threads gotta get those stuck in there make sure that's there and this is the easiest thing to do is just hand stitch this it's kind of a couture poncho and couture clothes are hand stitched a lot hand finished so it should be no different Make sure I get all these seams so none of that shows there. And then this, so there's my little hem, I got it started. This will have to go under here. It's going to be hard to tuck under. Oh boy. The cashmere rolls in pretty well, so I just got to, how am I going to do that? Tuck it under there. <laughs> I'm afraid to cut anything yet. Just kind of want to trim it so it's not too bulky. I don't know, I might just have to. Yeah, it's a lot of little stitches there. Mm -hmm. 
clip the curve here. It goes around my neck pretty well. Should probably trim some of the stuff in there. But then again, I don't have this interfaced or anything, so that seam itself will help keep that up. I didn't want it to be stiff, so it just it's just a soft collar. Yeah. It would look like that. And in the back it'll look from the front. I think it should go pretty good. I have to hem all this and stitch that, and then I'll be uh, stitching just right through here. So a seam right there, that'll keep that in place. And uh, on to the whole hem. All right, this is how it's looking. I have a ton of pins in here. I have to get it all done. And this is how the back looks. But I gotta do all the hand stitch in there, and then I just have to hem the edges. I'm thinking I might want to put a little pocket or something on here. I don't know. I have to look at Harry Potter and see, do they have pockets on their thing? Because then it might look more Harry Pottery. I don't know. I could put another like block in here of navy or something too. That might take it away from the Harry Potter look because I'm looking at it going, I don't know about this. <laughs> the Harry, I don't want to be like, is that a Harry Potter cape? I could just go with it and go, yeah. And people, because people love Harry Potter, right? <laughs> But I might actually add another navy block in here. I gotta see. I could always add it in. Yeah, take a little bit of time, but it would cut a hole in the cashmere. What are you gonna do? <laughs> but this is looking great. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow, hem all that, and uh, decide, I guess, if I'm gonna do the block. And I can always do it later. So. In today, to hem the edges of the poncho. Before I hem everything I'm gonna top stitch all of these seams down because inside here is all those Hong Kong finished seams and to when you kind of throw a cape on or a poncho on it uh, all these seams will go around so I'm just gonna stitch them down and then it'll be a nice little top stitch all along here and keep them really flat so right now I'm gonna go top stitch all these I'll have to do yellow and then break it and then put a navy and get all these nicely top stitched. And then I'm gonna hem it. I'm just gonna use a, a basic stitch and just roll these. Uh, I, always, I always press mine first, then I press it again and let it cool, get it real flat without burning this cashmere though, cause it, uh, it wanna crush the pile. And then I just run through it with a machine stitch. Top stitching looks great on here. I love that look. And bonus, it keeps all the seam allowances <laughs> intact. So wonderful. Now onto the hem. What I'm gonna do is hem it. I'm gonna mark it three quarters of an inch right here. I'm gonna press it, let it cool. Then I'll roll it under, I call it my 50-50, like that. And then top stitch all the way around it. Breaking it into yellow thread when I get over here. That will make for a quick and easy, simple hem. Press up about three quarters of an inch here. Get a crease on it. And then I tuck it under 50-50 right here. Should cut off these little frayed. This, this fabric really frays. Then I press this. Lots of steam on it. Let it cool under there. And then tuck that under. Press this. That cool under there. Add pins as I go. And all I gotta do is sew over it. I like to sew on the right side, but with all this bump, it might be easier to do the on the wrong side. Okay, now I gotta get, this is this, this the side. And I gotta get these corners looking good. So I'm gonna do this three quarters in to chunk out just a little bit of this. 
so thick. It's going to go this way, I suppose. We need to chunk out a little bit more. It looks like that. <laughs> goes this way, and then a 50 50 this way. under here. And pin this there. Press that. Alright, have the yellow side hemmed. Looking good. So I did like little V right here and didn't go all the way into the corner and I'm just going to hand stitch that down a little bit make it real tight because I like it how it just goes like that and now I have to do the navy side but I've run out of time I'm gonna have to do this tomorrow <laughs> little increments I'll get it done then I have a new cape okay I'm in today I can totally finish this today I have a half hour <laughs> before my next class. Yesterday, during the class, I had my other teacher teaching one part, so I was actually able to roll up and press and prep the whole hem on here. So all I have to do now is the navy side of the hem, and then, uh, then I'm gonna think about the button and stuff, but I'm gonna do that later. So, because I can totally wear this without a closure. So now all I gotta do is run the navy hem on here, and then free to wear it. I'll be back in a minute. I'm done. My colored poncho is done. With my color blocking. I don't feel like Harry Potter in it today. Actually, with the other color behind it, it's kind of fun. Yeah, because I was really worried about looking like a Harry Potter cape. Not that that's a bad thing, but <laughs> um, I was like... <laughs> I watched all the Harry Potters. So I wouldn't want to be questioned on the streets, right? <laughs> so, wow. Now, one last thing to do with this is I wanted to add a button, and I found this button in my stash. It's brown. I thought that would be kind of fun. Put it right here, and then it goes over just a little bit like this, and I have a button like that. Ta-da! So I was gonna, um, I was gonna make like a yellow or navy button with like maybe little flower petals on it or something kind of artistic here. That's what I have in mind. But my original choice, what I wanted to do was do a magnet. So I have these magnets right here and um, they're purse magnets. And I thought that would be good right here and then it just goes bink like that and stays on. But with these, you have to put a hole in your garment. So I'm a little, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta commit to that. So, so I'll do that. Maybe put a button over it. I had to hide that part, and then this would be the other part. It look just good, just plain. But I think they have sew-on magnets like this. So, man, you'd have to sew it on pretty strong because it would clamp over. So I'm gonna look before I put a hole in this, and then I'm gonna wear it once and really decide if I want to put a button on it. Uh, but it'd actually be good because you know sometimes these things they slide off and if you have it on with like a little just closure like that especially a magnet one um it would stay on and then yeah you know cool but I'll wear it once I'll wear it this weekend and uh decide what i'm gonna do with that button so so i'm also gonna draft this out and just trace it onto uh, paper and turn it into a pdf for you so if you want this collared poncho you can have it. It's pretty simple to make. I don't have instructions with it, but you could uh, follow how I made it on here, and it's pretty much a series of straight stitches. Collar is pretty simple. Did a nice hand stitch on this, and yeah, looks really fun. This is going to be a fun little little poncho to wear in the cold weather. Yay! <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, and. Uh, Love to see it if you make one. Different color blocks, you could also, you could chop it anywhere. It's just a square, chop it, add some seam allowance, all that. So I'll see you in the next video.